we have Ro from Alt Investors Roundtable, and we're going to be talking about the silver shortage. We have some graphs that we've seen that show that um, there's a massive silver debt bubble. You've seen this graph, right? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. And um, this 20,000 tons, which is approximately where the debt is, and this is the um, United States debt. This is around um, 540 million ounces, which is uh, pretty close to the entire silver available um, above ground. And all that is mined each year is around 700 to 900 million ounces. So it seems like they're coming to a like tipping point. Well, if you look at the price of silver, it's gone from four dollars an ounce in two thousand to fifty dollars an ounce in two thousand and eleven. So if you look at that price move, first of all, that was over a tenfold increase, eleven fold increase in the price of silver, or you could say twelve fold increase. Mm -hmm. in the price of silver. So we've seen massive moves right now. And if you look at it right now, yeah, you have a correction in the price of silver. But getting back to what you're saying, that there's a shortage based upon the silver debt, I don't buy that right now. Because if you look at how the free market will price silver in the long run, the price is eventually going to catch up. I mean, sure, markets may not price silver correctly in the short run, but in the long run, they always will get it right. And I do see higher silver prices. So some people are saying, hey, there's manipulation. There's, sh There could be a shortage right now. I don't think there's a shortage. Could it, the price be rigged? Yeah, I think it's rigged up and it's rigged down as well. So that's my thought on that. It's um pretty close to the breaking point, actually, but it's relatively um, like they're still delivering at the moment and David Morgan has said and you mentioned um, that they are delivering just-in-time inventory but I feel like this is almost evidence of a shortage because silver is not supposed to be a commodity that's delivered just in time that's like kind of treating silver like bacon and um, silver like the uh, price of silver doesn't factor any of the thousands of years worth of slave labor that was done to get a majority of it that was used up um, during the electronics boom era. You're making some good points. Chris Duane also says similar things like that. But the way that I look at it, you're speaking of just-in-time inventory. Well, here's the deal. If you have all these mints operating and they have all this excess demand that they're not forecasting, then guess what? They're going to A, have to make these workers have more hours, or B, they're going to have to find guys on the street trying to work these hours. And if you look at the U.S. Mint, what happened in 2012 was that they actually lost money on Silver Eagles. They put a loss at $4.4 .4 million. So people are saying, hey, the Silver Eagles, or if you look at the U.S. Mint, they're out of sales or they suspended sales. Why did they do that? Well, last year, they ran a lousy business model. They had all these eagles produced at the San Francisco Mint. And since they did that, they ended up losing $4.4 .4 million. And the demand wasn't as what they forecasted. So they didn't forecast that much demand for this year and this is why they've had problems so they've had to number one suspend sales which they've done a few times this year and the reason is because they didn't want to come out at a loss because if they have too much inventory at the end of the year they're gonna to have to write it off against their income statement and this is what happened last year and they don't want to repeat a situation like that and then if you look at just-in-time inventory when it comes to what happened a month ago, you said, or you had all these guys saying, hey, there's a silver shortage out there. I can't get my silver eagles or I can't get my silver. But within the next few weeks, all the silver was there or all the silver was there. And in addition, if you look at some of the guys that we follow, Silver Doctors, Ranting Andy, they were saying that, 
a few weeks ago or a week ago, I think it was actually a few weeks ago, that demand is starting to cool down. So that's how I look at it. I mean, any business class teaches about just-in-time inventory, or if you're a business major, I don't know what you majored in, but all these business students had to take a management class. And you learn that if there is an excess demand situation, then guess what? All these supply chains are going to be screwed up. It's going to be a logistic problem, which I see happening or which occurred. A lot of the mines always take a loss or usually take a loss every year. And they will continue to do that for several years until they go bankrupt. So this is just um, taking money out of the collective people in a way. So by buying silver, you are getting uh, free money from the, just the whole society who, um, at least the people in control, benefit and need to suppress silver to continue their control, I feel, because they, um, they need to keep people in, people in the paper dollar. Gregory Manorino talks about that a lot. So they have to keep people into paper assets, and the silver is um, and gold and other things like that are definitely um, you know challenging that uh, power. But uh, what else? So they can just print money, and it's, they don't print the money actually, but they can just you know digitally give the money to the mines and make them just barely, barely make it by. And they're certainly not, you know, running out there to try to get as much silver as they can to sell for $22 an ounce or whatever we're at right now. Yeah, it's like 21.50. But adding on to what you're saying, I mean, if you look at gold and silver in terms of other currencies, it's going to do a little better than the dollar right now. I mean, if you look at the yen, the yen is continuing to get debased up until the last few days. So gold and silver are going to probably be attractive in that currency as long as the yen continues to slide. But you don't know what's going to happen if the yen carry trade unwinds. And there could be other currencies as well. I mean, if you look at the Indian rupee, it's probably at an all-time low or close to an all-time low. Like $1 gets you 58 rupees. If you go to other third world nations, yeah, the price of gold and silver is going to be a lot higher than the U.S. dollar. And the U.S. dollar, in my opinion, is going to be the last man standing, but it is going to fall hard as all these other fiat currencies in the long run. I've been noticing on the, um, I'm not sure what you want to call these channels, but like the mainstream Republican radio channels, they've been um, guiding people towards gold and silver IRAs. And I feel like this is a um, pretty smart scheme actually by the banker types. It's um, basically they're getting people that are heading out the door and they're turning them right back in. And it may be a longer lasting type of Ponzi scheme, but when it all comes down to it, they're gonna be invested in SLV. And maybe if they're invested in the silver mines, they'd be a little bit better off but either way, they're not really getting what they're, they might have been looking for, which would be solid, real assets. In regards to what you're saying, you have to look at these conservative channels. Who's probably promoting gold right now? I know Glenn Beck talks a lot about gold. There's Michael Savage, who has a large audience. Even Sean Hannity started getting on the bandwagon, I think, a few years ago, saying that, yeah, Ron Paul was correct on fiscal and monetary policy. But putting that aside, I mean, I wouldn't think that these conservative guys who are pumping up some silver companies would make this bull mark. I mean, would try to capture people in the wrong direction. But how this system could continue on, how this Ponzi scheme could continue on, is what happened actually in Argentina and also some other third world countries. Number one, what they did was they forced people into the bond market. So they confiscated 401ks, and all that money was placed in the bond markets, or a huge chunk. But still, they faced hyperinflation or nasty inflation. And they're going to kick the can down the road in many ways that many people cannot foresee. What I see happening is they could have bail-ins, which they've had in Cyprus, or two, what they could do is they could do the Argentinian 
situation. They could just take the money and put it into the bond market. It doesn't necessarily have to be in gold. And they could actually push the price of gold even further down compared to what we see. They could push down the price of silver further down than what we can see. Some people have been saying $20 is the low. I don't think so. I believe that they could push it down way lower than many of us think. I feel that it's like America is a pressure cooker and the more that they squeeze the silver, it's already having visible signs of strain. Um, I feel that um, a manipulation that they have used and manipulation is just like trying to do whatever you can to change the price. So if they can do anything that tricks, you know, if they're like, well, this will get 1% of the people out, then that's a manipulation that could benefit them in a certain situation. And one of the main manipulations I've seen is that they just reduce the availability of different types to basically nothing except for the wholesale type bullion and the kilogram coins. They'll have like one single semi numismatic kilo and they'll then they'll say that they have variety so there's just price manipulation if there wasn't there would be everything available at whatever price to it needed you know to get it there my view on manipulation is that prices are manipulated to the upside downside and in between if you look in 2009, we should have experienced a deflationary depression where the prices of silver should have gone back to roughly $5 an ounce. Gold should have gone down to roughly $405, excuse me, $400 to $500 an ounce at least. And what they did was they came up with tricks to move the price of gold and silver to the upside. They had quantitative easing, which is manipulation of the currency. Two, they had the relaxation of mark-to-mark accounting rules, which made all these banks' balance sheets look a lot better than what they were ought to be. And three, you had Obama's crazy stimulus program. So the market was manipulated to the upside based on all those programs in early 2009. And then now some people are saying that, hey, there is manipulation based on what you're trying to say and based on what certain entities in the U.S. government and other central banks are doing. I'm not denying that. I'm pretty sure that there's some hanky-panky behavior going on. But when people are talking about manipulation, we have to be careful and only focusing on the downside because there is manipulation to the upside, and I don't like manipulation one bit at all. It seems that silver is significantly different from these other commodities because, um, like oil, for instance, oil we said was running out 30, 40 years ago, and we tried to restrict the supply, especially in the United States, and then put all types of different historic parks and whatnot on top of the whatever reserves were left that weren't immediately hit, like in the Texas oil days. So the oil we protected and tried to keep around, but the silver seems like it's the opposite in that it's to our benefit to um, just suppress the price with paper silver to let our companies like Apple get as much uh, cheap silver as they need. They've been churning out these products for tens of years. And, um, yeah, definitely a good amount of that time, the silver price was incredibly low. And now the silver is going to start to eat into their costs. So it's definitely a factor in the industry. I haven't looked at certain balance sheets or income statements when it comes to the price of silver. But, yeah, you're right. If the price of silver does continue to go up, over the next five to ten years, which I do believe is going to happen, but I do see a downside occurring in the first place, but eventually it's going to pick up. But if you do see higher prices, yeah, it's going to definitely eat at the margins of these companies. But when you're talking about manipulation, I mean, you have to remember that silver was $4 an ounce, which I mentioned before, and it went all the way to $50 an ounce. I mean, if you look at from 
2010 to 2011, it went from $17 to $50 an ounce. It looked like there was some manipulation on the upside, so I have to point that out. But regardless, if people want to believe there is a cartel trying to suppress the price of silver, guess what? You cannot continue to suppress one asset class for an extended period of time because free markets do not work like that. You can get away within the short run, but in the long run, markets will prevail. That's a good point there. And um, I'm going to put this graph up on the video. You can see that the silver debt, though, has grown as the silver price has risen. seems like they're trying to toss a lid onto the pressure cooker and hold it down tighter. I really do think there's going to be a break point where the COMEX is going to default. JSNIP4 talks about this a lot. And... It's going to be bad when it happens, but all the money that's in um, the paper silver, if that did break and it was forced out, I don't believe it would all go back into physical silver, but definitely a good bit of it would. I mean, the thing is that, yeah, it doesn't have to go into silver. It's probably going to go into hard assets. You have to remember that governments don't like gold and silver, so... If people are fearful of what the government could do when it comes to gold and silver, you're going to see money going into maybe platinum, palladium, copper, other hard assets to try to get away from this taxation system from gold and silver. So you could see a lot of money go into physical silver, which you try to imply. But I do see more money going outside of physical silver. In addition, you're saying that yeah, silver is going to eventually have a great short squeeze. And it's probably going to happen. And it's going to happen because the U.S. dollar is going to lose a significant ground over some time. I don't think it's going to happen initially. And I've told this to Gregory Manorino in, in her interview, that initially the dollar is going to strengthen to a level that we're probably never going to imagine, probably going back to the 89 Dixie level or 89 on the Dixie. But eventually, it's going to lose a tremendous amount of purchasing power. I just don't know when that's going to happen. And then you're going to see gold and silver go up because they're going to have to monetize all this debt. And then you're going to have all these foreign countries say, you know what, screw you. We're just going to dump our dollars and treasuries. The United States is a much larger entity than any other before that where we've um, like analyzed graphs like this. And it could go on much longer than anyone believes. So it's very important to have, you know, backup and backup for your backup. So where can people check out your work, Raul? They can type in on YouTube, Alt Investors Hangout. My channel is Alt Investors Hangout. And, yeah, I do, I do some interviews. I do some podcasts. And I sometimes make graphs of videos telling people what I think. So... Yeah, people could follow me there. Excellent. I had a great time interviewing you today, and we will talk soon. This is Patriot John Adams with Trillion Dollar Media. I'll see you guys soon.